Well, we are coming to the end of the message series that we've been in the last four weeks called Deliverance and Discipline. And we have gone on a long journey in a very short time. And I've gotten some really incredible testimonies of what God has done in people's lives of just the truths that he's been telling people. So for some of you, it really just unlocked some things you just didn't even know about. And so I'm just so thankful that God has helped us. And if you've missed any of the messages, I encourage you, go back. We've got them online for you. You can go check them out. But I want you to see our core statement that we're going to read for the last time today. It said, in life, we have negative events, people, and even our own choices that do us lasting harm and affect how we think and behave. And what it does is sometimes those very negative things they create what we've learned patterns in our lives and how, and how we behave and how we think. And unfortunately, those patterns are, are so locked in, it almost seems like it's going to be impossible to change. It almost becomes now our identity. It's just who we are. We don't like it. That's not the way we want it to be. But, but we're just so locked into it because that pattern has been there. We almost give up hope. And so this message series was about hope. And, and a way out of those things, even though it may have been with you for a long time, God's got a, a place of freedom for you. He's got a better way. And we learned the methods of how to do that. Last week, we really covered a lot. Please, if you did not miss last week, that was kind of the mountaintop of the whole message series. And so please go check that out. But today, I want to kind of talk about some of the negatives. Okay, so we've learned that in our patterns of thinking, sometimes it's really good, and, and, and the principles are the same. Whether we're going a good direction, it locks in the good, but if we're going in a bad direction, it kind of locks it in. So today I want to deal with the negatives, and so I want you to see this statement is that some of those negatives that we've talked about, they live with us constantly. In fact, they, they can just dominate our thinking. It's like we just live with them. And, and you'll understand as we go through the message today what those are. But you know, you know there, there's some of you, you have some, it's, it's like it just never goes away. It's just that nagging, lingering thought. It's like you can't ever deal with it. And, and the problem is it now affects every area of your life. So it's not just living up here. It's showing up in your words and in your behavior, maybe even how you treat people or, or how you handle situations or how you react. It, it lives with you. Now, sometimes it goes the other way. Some negative memories, they've got locked away. And, and, and it's almost like you've forgotten them. We, we, we've, we've had people experience that when we minister to them, that God will bring it up. They're like, I totally forgot about that. But God wanted to deal with it, but they had locked away sometimes because it was just so painful that their brain in, a, in protection mode locked it away. But the problem with that is even though we may not remember it, even though it's not on the front of our mind, those things are still there, and they are silently influencing our lives. It's there. You can't help it. Just because you're not seeing it, it's showing up in your life. And you may not recognize it that way, but God wants to help you with it because it's leading your life really away from where God wants you to be. Or it's, it's like a pulling at you, and you don't even understand it. So today, you may have some of those moments. Or in the coming days, as God equips you through this message, how to deal with them, you may find God stir some stuff up going, man, I had totally forgotten about why is that happening now? Because God's equipping you today to how to take care of it. So it no longer directs your life in a negative way. It's going to lead you in a positive direction toward God. Now, in those thoughts, uh, and today, you might as well say, why well, we got to got to deal with it? Because as, I want you to see this next statement. It may seem easier just to leave it alone. Hey, if it's, if it's locked away, I'm not thinking about it. Let's just forget about it. Let's leave in that place of we're not going to deal with it. Because it, it's painful. It's painful. We've had some people we walk through what we call personal ministry with. And, 
and to help us understand their life we have them kind of give us a written synopsis of some things their life and they find it so hard to fill it out because that thing that was locked away now all of a sudden the pain's coming back it's like i don't want to deal with that that was painful enough then why i gotta deal with it again and so it's better just say i'm just going to leave it alone because we think it's insignificant. We think because it's unseen, it's not directing our lives. The exact opposite is true. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not affecting you. The other thing is dealing with the past, sometimes it takes effort. Some of the things I'm going to tell you about today, and even what we talked about last week, is not a one-time fix. There are sometimes God does something instantaneous. There are other times, and that's where this message series came from, is discipline. We got to work it out. Even the Bible says you got to work out your salvation with, with, with what it calls fear, a seriousness, and a reverence. That, that you just got to work it out. Well, that's hard. Anytime you're trying to create a new discipline or a new habit, it's hard. You know, there's this thought that says it takes 21 days to create a new habit. Who wants to do something for 21 days? I want my instant fix now. Well, sometimes the answer is in the discipline. It's taking God's word and God's wisdom and God's direction and applying it day by day by day by day. And as we're doing it daily, consistently, it creates those new channels that direct our life in a totally better direction. And so, but it's tough. And so some of those things today aren't going to be quick fix answers. But there's still the answer, and the choice is yours to do what God's telling you to do and just apply it every day. So now, before we begin this message, I got a question for you. What are you going to do with today's message? What are you right now deciding to do with what you're going to hear today? Was today just church just to show up, thinking just sitting in the room does something? It's better to be here and not be here. But just sitting here and then walking out doing nothing with it doesn't change anything. Well, why, not, why not go through the effort of what God's given you and change? So let me talk about six past areas that we're going to deal with in order to change our future. And the first one, if you're writing these down, and I encourage you to take notes even if you don't have a note sheet, is past choices. Past choices. Has anybody in here ever done something dumb? Okay, if you didn't raise your hand, you can just zone out for a while right there. I, I'm going to, I, I mean, I can't relate to you because I have done some of the, and I'm, I'm going to use the, the word we're not supposed to use. If you have parents, you have children, cover their ears. I've done some of the stupidest things ever. So dumb. Thursday was one of those things, and that's why I don't have a voice today. Just dumb. Uh, and you know what? <laughs> I woke up this morning going, nah, I kind of regret that. Uh, you know, I look back at really some bad choices I've made. I didn't think about it, or some. I thought about it and just really did something dumb. I didn't pray about it. Didn't ask God what he thought. Went against sometimes what wisdom other people had given me. I made a bad choice. And, and the problem I found with bad choices doesn't just affect our life. It affects our loved ones around us that care about us. Either it affects them directly, meaning they now have consequences. Or just because they love you, they hate seeing you go a wrong direction and what may come from that. And so it just grieves them. Parents, you can understand that. You know, as, as sometimes our children make choices we would rather them not make, even though it may not directly affect us, it still hurts. It grieves us because we don't want them making a mistake. We don't want to do anything that causes them harm. We may have even made choices that did hurt somebody. It did cause them pain. It's one thing to hurt yourself. 
what I found that, man, there's a whole nother level of pain when, you're, when you affect somebody else. You may have done that. I've done it. I, I, I would rather have just taken those memories and locked them away. And to be honest, those are the ones I found lived with me. I've had people harm me. But me harming myself and harming others, that's the ones that kind of fit in that dominated my thinking realm. That's the ones when I, when I would get in the presence of God, it was like, I'm not even worthy to be here because I, I made such a dumb decision, especially knowing better. Like, and I grew up in a, in, a, in, a, in a home that Jesus was involved and my parents taught me well. I, I didn't have excuses to make dumb decisions, but I made bad choices. But here's what I want to give you. If you're finding yourself in that place today, I want to give you this very powerful verse. And it's Ephesians 1, 7. And it begins this way. It says, in him we have redemption through his blood. And that redemption meaning he's bought us back. We're not stuck in that decision. I want you to hear that. If we make a decision, it can direct our life. But it says he'll buy us, and he'll change the very direction of our life. And then he goes, and the forgiveness of our trespasses, that's our mistakes. That's where we've gone somewhere we shouldn't have gone. You know, there, there are signs that we, in, in our area, especially a lot of hunting land, that says no trespassing. What God says is, you went somewhere you weren't supposed to go. But I'm going to forgive you of it. I'm going to help you with that. And it says, according to the riches of his grace. Here's the truth I've had to accept. That if God forgives me, I can definitely forgive myself. Now, some of you are wondering if God for, has forgiven you. If you are one of his children, in other words, you've accepted, you have embraced the life of Jesus Christ. We call it being saved. If you've made that decision, then you, the, the sin's already forgiven. That's what's pretty cool. The blood of the Lamb is so powerful, not just covers past, it covers today. Some of you are on the way to church today, you blew it. And by the way, past means any time before this moment. So a second ago is past, because some of you, you've already blown it in my first point. Your spouse is like, I'm stubborn. That's past. All right. But past, present, future, God's already covered it. He's got the solution for it. We don't have to live there. What I found is so hard sometimes is to forgive me, especially when I knew better. But what I just have to do, the Bible says there's things by faith we just have to accept, is just going, God, you're good with me. And if you're good with me, I'm good with me, and I'm just going to let it go. And that's what the word forgive literally means. It means just to let go. God doesn't hold on to it. He lets it go. And said, In fact, he, he lets it go out of his mind. He said he puts it as far as the east is from the west. If you remember in science class, that's an ever-increasing distance at the speed of light. That's pretty cool when you think about your sins. That's how far they are away from him and his memory. What we've got to do is just say, Lord, you forgive me, I forgive me. I let it go. There's a powerful story about a woman who, who I think in a moment, if we could go back and, and, and see this scene, I think she in her very bad place was going, I really messed up. And I wonder if she had a moment kind of zooming back through life that led her to that point. It was in Israel, and she was caught sleeping with a married man called adultery. Well, I don't know how they caught her or what happened, but, but they, 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 they went in and they got her. Now, I don't know what happened to the dude because he was complicit too. I, I have a problem with this story because oh, she's the only one that's about to get punished. But they bring her out in the street, and they're going to stone her, which legally was permissible. And legally was the answer, but Jesus was there. 
And it's an incredible story about what he does. That's where he begins to write in the sand. And people always wonder, what did he write? And, and people have speculated, who knows, who cares? But the people who were about to throw rocks to kill her walked away. And she's just left there alone. I wonder if she was even barely covered up. Because they caught her in bed. I don't know. Maybe she didn't have clothes on. I don't know. Can you imagine her in a hard place of going, I can't believe I made that dumb decision. I can't believe when he said, would you, I said yes. Or maybe she even asked him, would you? Looking back with regret. But there's Jesus. And he goes to her. And she kind of sits up. And this is where John 8, 10 picks up. It says, straightening up. Jesus said to her, woman, where are they? Meaning all the people that are about to throw stones that have yanked her out of the room, ready to kill her. And she said, he goes, did no one condemn you? And she says, no one, Lord. What a powerful statement. He says, and I Do not condemn you either. Some of you need to hear Jesus speaking to you this morning saying, I do not condemn you. But then he says another powerful statement. Here's where the tough choice comes in. He says, now, don't go sin anymore. There's a place of letting go of our past, but what we have to choose to do is not keep repeating the mistake. That there's a place today, some of you are going to have to decide to say, you know what? That part of my life is over with. I'm just going to sin no more. Because that's the answer to it. Otherwise, you live in that place of just constant condemnation. In fact, the enemy doesn't even have to condemn you because you see your own mistakes. You're condemning yourself. It's like you're picking up stones to kill yourself. That you just got to decide to say, you know what? God forgives me. I forgive me. But i got to straighten up. And with God's help, you can. And that's what some of the past messages have been talking about, how to do that. The second past thing that you may haven't be having to deal with right now, I'll call them past people. Past people. In other words, people can be incredibly mean. People can do some difficult things. I've watched it happen in parents with children, children to parents. I've seen it happen with spouses to each other. Man, I have watched people who at one time were madly in love become some of the cruelest people to each other, yelling at each other and cutting each other down, saying some of the the, the, the cruelest, most cutting words. Man, it hurt. And in fact, the hurts that happened, the ones... The, the, the greatest are the come from the ones that are your closest with. The closer to proximity and relationship to them, the more the wound hurts. And some of you, you've had that happen. Some of you, you've been betrayed. You've had friends betray you. You've had people uncover you. In other words, you confided something in them, and they just blabbed it all over the place. You're hurt. You're wounded. You're mad. Man, you just want to give up on people. Some of you have even thought about giving up on life altogether because of what happened to you. People can be cruel. But here's a truth I've come to find out. I can't change other people. I can't direct what they do. I can only direct me. And I get to choose my response. People can be really mean. And I can allow those words to come in, and it's like I embrace them. that They direct my life. Either a hurt or maybe a word. Maybe somebody told you something, and it became your identity. And because you started going that direction in life, other, your behavior was affected, and now other people identified you that way. And, and you were almost like given a nickname. Or you became the, 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 the butt of a joke. And you kind of laugh along with them, but it ain't funny. But now that's your identity. A 
But you get to control what happens. Because the problem is, if you hold on to that, especially that hurt and that wound, that word they said, it was so wrong. There's no justification for it. If you did something wrong, you didn't deserve that. But God says, there's one answer to it. There's one. And it is so hard. And we're here to help you with that, by the way. That team that's going to be up here today, they're experts at helping with this issue. And it's this word, forgive. Now, wait, we just talked about last point. We talked about how God forgives us. All the dumb stuff we've done, by the way, hurt God. Every time we sin, it's against God. We may think it doesn't hurt anybody. It affects him. And when God says, I want you to take on my nature just like I forgave you, I want you to forgive. Now, how hard is that? Almost impossible. But with God, all things are possible is what the Bible says. And you can fight it. But what you've got to do is decide. So look at this at Mark eleven twenty five. 25. It says, whenever you stand praying, forgive if you've got anything against anyone. So your father will forgive you your trans- transgressions. You have to make that choice to forgive. And I've really found it does help to have somebody with you, to walk with you through it. But what do you forgive? There's two things you forgive, and I'm going to put this on the screen. You forgive both the specific and general behavior. In other words, you may have a lasting memory of what they did or what they said. It is vivid it lives on in fact you could go back to that moment in a heartbeat and you're back in the emotions and the pain of when it happened it lives there or you may not have specific memories you just remember they were a bad and you can put the blank in a bad parent a bad brother or sister a horrible friend they were always mean they're always forgot that we were supposed to get together They never said anything nice to me. I don't know what what it is, but it kind of just kind of, you don't have specific memories, but you know there's a bunch of them there, and it kind of created a label that you put on them. And what God is saying, you want to move past that, what that person did, you've got to choose to forgive. Colossians 3.12 says it this way. It says, so as those who have been chosen of God, and that's us, by the way, it says, holy and beloved, beloved, put on a heart of compassion. Compassion? Man, they deserve me to come over there and give them one of these or find a bat and take care of it. God's going, no. Compassion's the answer. Kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Remember when I told you the beginning of the message is going to be real hard? Y'all remember that? This is where it gets hard right here. That stuff right there is tough. When they've been mean to you and done cruel things, that's hard. But he says this is the answer, and he goes on to say in verse 13, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. If you can complain about anything against them, you forgive just as the Lord forgave you. Now, sometimes we can kind of be make a foolish decision and keep putting ourselves in harm's way. Now, we can't always choose that but sometimes we need to do a better job of picking our friends all right now married couples do not listen i'm about to say because some of you are going to go hey i can i can roll out (laughs) no it doesn't apply there but sometimes we kind of because of just history we kind of keep putting ourselves in harm's way and let me just give you this verse in proverbs 13 20 it says walk with the wise and become wise but associate with fools and get in trouble Some of you have had some people lead you into some really dumb things. You need to stop hanging out with them. You don't want to lose contact. You need to be Jesus with them, but you don't need to hang out with them. So some of you today, that verse is for you. You just need to change some of your friends because they keep doing bad things against you or getting you to do stuff you should not do. Now, another pass we deal with is experiences and events. Some of us have had traumatic things happen to us we didn't cause it it just happened 
It may have been a car wreck. It may have been another kind of accident. It may have just been a catastrophic event like a flood or a fire. You just had something, and it affected you in a big way. I'm going to give you a really cool answer for this. This, this I learned a couple half, couple about two and a half years ago. And, man, it has helped me so much because sometimes I looked at a past event, and I, could, I couldn't get past it. All I saw was bad in it. And, 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 I, and I heard a pastor give this guidance, and, man, it helped me so much. So if you're in that place of there's just some events that happen in your life, some experiences, and it just lives with you, and you know it's kind of affected your life, even directed your life. Let me give you three wisdom points to help you, and these are in your notes. The first one is you do what's called reframe your past by looking at it a different way. Some of you, you you've done that with a picture. You had a picture that was real nice, but it had this funky frame with it, real cheap frame. And, and you went and decided to put a real nice frame on it. It like it changed the entire picture. It's like you saw the picture in a whole different way. What was just almost like a cheap picture because of the frame around it. You put something valuable around it. It changed the whole look of it. That's what we're doing here. You can't control what happens to you. but You can control how you frame it. In other words, you look at it differently. So how do you reframe it? Here's your three things. When something doesn't go like you want, thank God for what didn't happen. That car wreck you were in, yeah, it messed your car up really bad. It messed your finances up pretty bad. But you may have walked away from it. You may have lost that job. Yeah. Uh, but you didn't get a bad health diagnosis. You can see, we, we can always, we can kind of look at the worst, but if we step back, we can go, you know what, it was really bad. But it's not as bad as it could have been. Because sometimes we can focus on the, what, the, our perspective of bad, and it like devastates us. But when we see it from kind of a step back and start saying what it could have been, it just kind of helps take us that, that moment isn't as bad. It's not going to make it good necessarily, but it's not as bad. The second thing is you look for God's goodness even in that situation. Because you're going to find what you're looking for. Whatever you choose to dwell on, that's what you're going to see. I'll tell you something about a pretty cool story. You know, we have an amazing church family, by the way. Um, there was a, a situation with a somebody's close relative, I'll put it, somebody very close to them, who had a health issue. They had no insurance to take care of it. And they, they had to have this procedure done. And we got a testimony yesterday saying, they were able to have the procedure, and either somebody or a few people in church just took care of it. So they could either dwell on the, oh, my God, that happened to my relative. But they chose to look at it going, I saw God's goodness right there in the midst of it. And by the way, the relative is doing great. So now we're seeing God's goodness and healing. But they, they chose to look at it a different way. They can be, oh, my God, this is so unfair. Why did this happen to them? Always happens to me. Now they said, no, look what God did. They saw God's goodness. And then the last one, and this one's a big one, is you let Jesus help you determine the meaning. And you just kind of take a step back for that moment and just say, Jesus, what do I need to see? What do I take from this? Because Jesus will give you a whole different perspective of what's going on. He may not answer, why is it happening? But he can say, let me show you what I'm going to do with it. 
Even if it was something unfair done to you. Well, he's the one who brings justice. Maybe, maybe you're sick, and Jesus is going, yeah, but watch, I'm about to do a healing work in you. It's not just going to blow your mind. Watch what it does to people around you. In fact, that one you've been praying for for 20 years, they're going to get saved through it. Just hold on and watch. You just don't know. But let Jesus help you determine the meaning. Paul was an amazing man. He's out there preaching the gospel, building the church. But a lot of people didn't like what he was doing. So one time he gets put in jail. And it's when he was in, in Rome. And it, it, he knows it's kind of toward the end of his life. And he kind of had a thought of what it was going to look like. He knew he was supposed to go there. And he's going to preach. And, and I, I can imagine his mind. He kind of saw it a certain way. Well, then he finds himself in jail. In fact, he was handcuffed to the jailers. And he could have been like, really, God? I'm a preacher. Where are the masses? And here I got guard on my right, guard on my left, sitting in a prison cell. He could have had that thought. But let me give you his perspective. And just I want you to visualize sitting in a prison cell, which aren't real pretty. He says this in Philippians 1, beginning in verse 12. He said, I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. He said in a jail cell. He said, for everyone here, including the guard that's attached to me, he said, he knows I'm in chains because of Christ. Verse 13. What, what is he saying is, huh, I get to talk to them all day long. They think they're holding me. No, they're stuck with me, and I'm going to tell them about Jesus. <laughs> People, if I were preaching to them, they could, like, leave going, ah, you're not a good speaker, and they go roll out. He's like, they stuck with me. But he said, you know what? They're Roman guards. They're influential. I'm preaching to them. They're going to take it out there. Then he goes on to say, because of my imprisonment, in fact, most of the believers here have gained confidence. So now it was inspiring others who may have been silent before. Now they're ready to go preach. They're like, well, Paul can't do it. I'm going to do it. He's stuck in jail. I'm not. Let me go tell people about Jesus. And he said, and speak without fear. Maybe before they were kind of fearful what was going to happen. They're like, what's the worst thing they can do? Put me in jail and kill me. Big deal. I'm going to heaven. I'm preaching. So Paul could have had the poor me stuck in prison. It's not going the way I want. Instead, he said, you know what? This turned out even better. Some of you, you're seeing the bad. Get with Jesus because he said, no, 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 no. You're missing what's about to happen. This is really good. It's really good. Another pass we've got to deal with, I'm going to just call it instruction. We've all been raised up in different environments in our, in our whatever home you grew up in, parents, grandparents, auntie, I don't, I don't know where you grew up, orphanage, I don't know. Wherever you grew up, you were instructed. You, we, most of us have been in school. We've had teachers' influence. We've had friends that instructed us and influenced us. We've had family members and on and on. We've had people that either by intentional words or just their demonstration, looking at their life, they've instructed us. And what's happened is sometimes that instruction wasn't good. Sometimes the stuff we heard from our mom or our dad was not good wisdom. It's actually led us down a path that wasn't good. In fact, it led us to make some really bad decisions. And you may have found that. And you may have found, man, I, I was taught to do it this way. But boy, that's just not worked out. But the problem with instruction, especially from influential people, is like it lives with us. It's, it's, like we, it's like we can't get away from it. It's just directed our entire way of thinking. And what we've got to do, the only way to get past it, really, is now to saturate ourselves with truth and wisdom. And if you're a Christian, you know where that answer is. It's the Bible. Some of you, 
you haven't picked up your Bible in a while. And the problem is if you're not, if you're not in your, your word really daily, you're not allowing it to direct your life. And whatever's been poured into you, you may not even remember it, but it's in there. Remember, there's stuff we've forgotten about, but it's directing our life. And you don't even know why you just keep doing certain things because you had somebody influential years ago say, you just need to do it this way. You don't even remember it, but it's directed you just to kind of think that way and behave that way and make those kind of decisions. But they kind of always keep, always keep falling apart. It's always the bad decision. What do you need? You need God's truth and wisdom to help you. And that's what 2 Timothy 3.16 says. It says all in Scripture is what's called inspired by God. And that word inspired literally means God breathed, meaning he said it. Even though he had man write it down, it's God's words. And he said it's useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what's wrong in our lives. You want to know why you keep making a bad decision? God's word will show it to you. But it not just shows you that. It gives you the right answer. It shows you how to make a better decision going forward. It gives you the answer for everything. It says, and then it corrects us when we're wrong. I love that. It doesn't just tell you what's wrong and then leaves you hanging. It says, no, let me. Just, it's going to show you the right way to go. and teaches us to do what's right. Then he goes on to say in verse 17, it said, God uses it to prepare and, equ and equip his people to do every good work. I mean, you just make good decisions. You just do good things. Instead of everything turning out wrong, it's like everything just starts turning out right. Everything goes bad, now everything just goes good. Why? Because you're doing it God's way. But the only way to have it happen is you got to get in God's Word. you got to immerse yourself. And the more you found the instruction was, was uh, really not the right thing. And, and look, I'm not saying they, they did it like they were intentionally trying to harm you. They didn't know. They're just doing what they were taught. We just kind of keep following that pattern. Some of you need to change the pattern just for your children's sake. Get in the Word of God. It is your answer. Your next pass, sometimes we got to correct, is habits. Habits. Boy, this one has been so hard for me. I've had some habits as literally as long as I can remember before I had memory that have been so hard to change. And we dealt with this last week, so I'm not going to get into it a lot here. But last week's message taught how do we recreate new habits. And I've applied it. It has helped me so much. Still got to work it out. Some of them have been living with me for a long time. And the longer the habits, sometimes it is the longer it takes to change. But you've got to just keep plugging away. And I see it becoming less and less and less. But here's what we learned last week. We take God's word that we learned the last point, and, and we use God's word to write a declaration. Meaning it, it's something we're going to say out loud. We're going to take the truth and the power of God's word, and we're going to make it personal. And we're going, to, we're going to make it to where it inspires us. And we're going to write it down, but then we're going to think about it. And then we're going to use our mouths and confess it. Why would we do that? Because the Bible says the power of life and death is right here in the mouth. But then God's word is powerful, so we combine our powerful mouth, along with God's truth that has so much power, and we now speak it over our life until we believe it. Because some of the things that we're declaring, we're going, yeah, right. Because we learned last week, we declared as though it is true right now. Well, change takes time. But we just got to put it out there. So last week's message gives you the answer, but let me show you this in Ephesians 4 beginning of verse 22. It says, in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self. There's a choice involved that you just got to decide, I'm getting away from that old man. I'm tired of that old man directing my life. I've got to change. He said, it goes on to say, which is being corrupted. If we keep going that, that, down our path, it's like it just destroys our life. Instead, we can have God's Word, and it builds our life. And the Bible 
even says there's what's called newness of life. It makes us new. And that's what it says in, in verse 23. It says, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Remember, this message here is all about what's going on up here because up here directs everything that we do. But we got to make this new with God's word. And then it goes on to say, and we put on this new self, which is in the likeness of God. It's being created in righteousness and holiness of God's truth. You want to reset those habits? Maybe it's a habitual way of thinking. Maybe it's a habitual behavior. You've got to take God's word, and you've got to make it personal to you and speak it over your life. And what will happen is it will begin to direct your life in a whole different way, and you're creating a whole different pattern that when you look back, your life now goes a whole better direction because your habits change. And the last one today, this past that we need to deal with, is our past thinking. Our past thinking. Now, remember what I told you the definition of past is? It was any time just before now. Some of you today, even here in this message, you've had your thoughts going in a direction you know they shouldn't go. It's not healthy. It's not holy. Our, our thinking is our struggle. And where we've got to deal with is any of those thought, past thinking, ways of thinking. Look at this in 1 Corinthians 14, 20. It says, brethren, don't be children in your thinking. Don't, 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 don't be immature. He said, now, in your behavior, be, be innocent with evil. He said, just like a baby. A baby doesn't sin. He said, be that way in your life. But he said, be in your thinking, be mature. We've got to grow up in our thinking. And some of those old thoughts, they're just not good. And God would say, you need to get them out. They're actually causing you a lot of harm. Romans 12, 2 is a verse that we've read during the series. I want to read it to you in a different translation. It says, don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world. Don't do things like the world does. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Some of you, you have a hard time knowing what God's will is. It's like you never quite understand what, what's the direction I should go. What is God saying? And what I found, part of the problem is up here. Is so clouded by past ways of thinking. They're just so worldly or so sinful or just ignorant of God's word. We just don't know. That, that when we put God's word in, God's wisdom, God's thoughts, it now changes us. We become radically different people but not just radically different people, radically different direction in life. Radically different choices. That we change. He said, then you'll know God's will, which is good and pleasing and perfect. God's got a better path for you. He's got a better plan for you. That's what we call God's will. But you've got to decide to say, I'm going to begin to change some things. God's got the answer for you. But you've got a choice today on what you do. Each part of this message series, we've had an action plan. Let me give you the last action plan for this message series. The first one is you've got to identify the past. We covered six things today. Maybe yours is a little different. But it's something in the past that's still living in your life today. It may be dominating your thinking. It may not. It may be something that you've forgotten about, but you just see your life constantly going in the wrong direction. It's in there. Sometimes we identify the, pro the, the, the issue by identifying the problem. Why do I always pick up a beer 
when I get into an argument with my spouse? Or why do I always get in an argument with my spouse after I picked up a beer? Well, we may find out the problem. Why do I always yell when something doesn't go the way I want it to? I see it harming my children. I know it hurts my spouse. But man, I just always do it. Sometimes what we do is we can see the problem. The problem is often an indicator of what's in the past. Maybe what that lie is that the enemy has told us. But whatever it is, let the Lord tell you. He'll show you how to identify it. He may recall it. And that's what may happen this week. Some of you may have, be having it right now. But some of you may this week, you may be driving down the road, and boom, a memory comes back. That's God pointed out so you can deal with it. And then what do we do? We take God's solution. Maybe it's forgiving somebody. Maybe it's forgiving ourselves. Maybe it's creating a new habit. Maybe it's starting to pour God's word into ourselves. Maybe it's just looking at a situation differently. I don't know what it is, but God's got the answer. And now you begin to apply it. What it does, it resets your thinking, and it changes the very direction of your life. I'm going to have everybody, whether you're in this room, watch online, just bow your head and close your eyes. My question to you is, is what's God saying to you? I told you this message is going to be personal. What's God saying to you in this moment? And what are you going to do with what he's telling you? The choice is yours. You can either just walk out of here, take nothing away from the day, and just keep going the direction you're going. Or you can today say, you know what? God's got my answer. I'm going to choose it. It may be hard. It may take a while. But I'm going to do it. Some of you today, you say, today's the day I'm ready to pick Jesus. Today is that day that I choose Jesus to make him my Lord and my Savior to start living the way he wants me to. I want to become one of his followers. I want to get saved. And I pray that if you're in that place that you know that your next step is not heaven, that today you would make that decision. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to come forward. The decision you make. Now, don't forget, after service, we'd love to walk with you through that, answer any questions you may have. Let me pray for you. Father, today's a tough message, a lot to it. Maybe stirred some things up inside of us that were long forgotten. Maybe even we didn't want to deal with them anymore. We, we pushed them aside. But, Lord, I just pray for your grace over every person that's watching this message and listening to it. Lord, you just be with them, oh, God. That you help them right now as their minds may be racing, oh, Lord, that you just be with them in that moment. Let them even feel your love and your grace right now. And, Lord, I just pray that you would just show them the right direction. And Jesus, you show up in this moment, and you show them the answer. Whatever it is for their life that's going to direct them in a new way, Lord, you make it plain, oh God. And just help us. I'm asking for help for me too, as I'm trying to reset some things. And Lord, just your strength is there with us. Just not just leading us in the right direction, but giving us the strength to go there. Lord, I just thank you for today and what you've done in our lives. We love you, O oh God. We honor you. And we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody said, Amen and Amen. While you're standing, come on, let's give God the best hand clap we can give. God bless you.